Hi, welcome back. Uh, this is a very important point. Uh, please do like this video so this information reaches more people. If you have not already subscribed, do subscribe and do share uh, again uh, so that the information benefits people. So uh, the question is related to delayed cot clamping. There is one uh, statement which is not correct regarding delayed cot clamping at delivery. So for or, uh, those of you who are not familiar with delayed cot clamping, I mean in the past 40-50 uh, years obstetricians used to clamp the cord immediately at delivery and that became a routine practice. Then we realized that delayed cot for at least a close 30 seconds to 1 minute should be better because this is actually the blood that is supposed to be in the lungs. The fetus doesn't breathe uh, or the lungs in the baby fetus doesn't do the work of breathing and so there is very little blood going through the fetal lungs. The placenta does the breathing for the baby and this blood is in the placenta. But actually after the baby is born and the lungs open up, this blood has to come back to the baby. If we clamp very quickly before the baby cries, the blood doesn't return and the baby is actually depleted of 20 to 30 ml per kilogram of blood volume. And this impacts the future health of the baby. This is also uh, the blood which has immune factors that have been transferred from the mother like immunoglobulin and other protective factors. There are a lot of stem cells in this blood as well. Uh, so all these uh, dep deprivation of these factors affects the baby. So coming to the points, uh, delayed cot clamping till 30 to 60 seconds is ideal practice. Delayed cot clamping is very important for premature babies as it reduces the risk of uh, bleeding in the brain ventricles or IVH. Uh, delayed cot clamping in term babies help to reduce iron deficiency anemia and also gives them more immune factors. Delayed cot clamping may not be done if there is antepartum hemorrhage, that is there is bleeding from an abnormal separation of the placenta for example and in some twin pregnancies especially the monozygotic twins you may not want to do delayed cot clamping and uh, the last point delayed cot clamping transfers maternal blood into the fetus. So I'll pause for a second you think about which choice is not correct the rest of them are correct so there is only one that's incorrect. So I hope you had a time to think about the answer if not you can pause the screen uh, and then uh, think. So the first point is correct because as I explained delaying till 30 to 60 seconds is ideal and in a premature baby they are very unstable, they have lung disease and uh, the de depletion of lung vol the blood volume uh, which would happen if you don't do delayed cord clamping is not good for these babies. So there is better stability, less need for transfusion, less bleeding in the brain in a premature baby if you do delayed clamping. So we try our best to do delayed clamping in preterm babies. In term babies as well because this extra volume has iron as well, iron deficiency is less in these babies and I mentioned the antibody transfer from the mother which also is a benefit. Uh, delayed cot clamping may not be done if there is antepartum hemorrhage because the maternal health is very important and you don't want to delay and also some blood loss may happen from the fetal side as well. The last point is obviously the incorrect one because as I said the fetal circulation has the blood inside the fetus as well as there is a fetal portion in the placenta. There is no admixture of the mother's blood into this fetal circulation. So the maternal blood if it comes into the fetus, uh, it's called uh, maternal fetal hemorrhage. There is also the reverse that can happen. So this is an abnormal situation and uh, that's not what we are talking about. So here delayed cot clamping only gets the fetal blood back into the fetus. There is no mixture with maternal blood. So uh, this is the incorrect choice. One additional point about delayed cot clamping, some of you may request stem cells uh, collection and obviously at least 30 seconds of delayed cot clamping should still be done because delayed cot clamping is something that's guaranteed to benefit your baby and stem cell collection need not be affected in most situations. Some volume loss may happen but the stem cells is a potential benefit while delayed cot clamping is a definite benefit. So you have to weigh the balance and you can go for stem cell collection if you plan to do that but just to improve the chances of getting stem cells don't uh, deprive your baby of uh, delayed cot clamping. I hope uh, these important uh, points help you and this is very important information. I hope you will share it with uh, friends and family. Do subscribe and uh, do like the video as well. If you don't mind joining the mem as a member of the channel, please click the join button on the channel page. Thank you.